Hello there folks, today we're going to take a look at the game called Archmage. It's published by Starling Games and the designer is Tim Herma. And in this game you are different magical schools trying to create and learn new spells and trying to outwit each other and get more territories than other players. So let's take a look at how the game works. So in Archmage you roam around this map over here, discovering all the different locations like wild unrests and towns and camps and also discovering different races to get some magical essence from all of that and you're also fighting each other on this map and recruiting followers. Now each turn you will have five action points, movement points to spend and how you move basically one move is one action point so let's say it's one if you want to move on an unexplored tile, you move over there for this, let's say the second uh, action point and you must uh, also spend a separate action point to, to discover that location. So third action point, I'm going to discover that location. So and usually this different location, I'm going to turn them over over here. These are the different wilderness locations that will give you magical essence based on what the locations are. And for example, this is the library, which is which gives you the time essence, magical essence. This one gives you matter, and this one gives you uh, death, and so on. So there are those different locations. Also, there are some special locations, like for example, we have rows here, which are the magical creatures. Then another town, though. Though in this one, I probably did the set a little bit wrong. So there might be some small issues, but let's say there is a camp also. In the camp, you can recruit extra followers and each time you move through those different locations which are not special locations like the races for example then you can also put down your followers on these locations and so these locations are now controlled by you because they have their followers your wizard himself or herself doesn't have the power to control the tile but the cool part is that if you're staying somewhere nobody can go through that locations where you are in because you're blocking that also you can build a tower and the tower gives you an extra opportunity to promote your apprentices your followers so you put the tower down somewhere for example you know here you build it and then you can do an extra action in that tower as well and this is also for controlling locations and blocking the other players and so on you will discover all of these locations and uh, putting down your followers over there and gathering some magical essence. So this is your board for magical essence. It's like time, will, death, blood, nature and matter. And you will mark all of your essences down here when you get them. Six is a maximum and you also spend them as well. This is the planetary kind of a system. You move the planets each at the beginning of each turn. You, you move one of the planets. This, this is basically like a round tracker over here and you will get an extra mana, extra magical essence over there. So these are the different circles, which are basically the different magical schools, like also the matter, nature, and so on. So eventually you will be able to also put your followers over here, your apprentices. And if you have uh, two apprentices in the basic circles next to each other, you can blend them in, you can basically promote them using the tower's ability in order to make them one, and go to the advanced level and eventually if you have two next to each other on the advanced level you can make them into the master level and this will basically mean that you will get better spells I'm gonna talk about the spells in a moment and eventually you can do uh, and have multiple followers in these spots over here and thus having the follower in a certain spot means that you can use that school spell that that's uh, Essences spell for example, I can use the basic green spell the nature spell if there would be no follower though I would be on that master level it doesn't matter because I Can only have the master level spell like each people knows one spell Let's say and there's no follower over here, which means I don't know the spell I cannot use that and the spells are right over here those cards over here and there are some basic spells for example this entangling winds you can see this is the nature spell. Uh, here it shows this is the basic one. The advanced ones have like uh, the symbol like that, and plus they have two two different colors. Uh, it matches the the, the same uh, location over here. For example, this uh, uh, this is yellow and purple, as you can see. So if you would be here, you could use the divination spell, for example. 
Yeah, and there are some advanced ones. For example, the time stop is a, is, is uh, sorry, it's a master level spell, the, the highest level spell, which has three different colors. Each time you play those cards, you must uh, give out mana. And for example, here you must give just one mana, which is uh, green. Or here you can give the combinations of three different colors, but you have to give three mana. For th this is death, will, and blood. You can give a combination of three in order to use that spell. And all these different spells, we can take a look at them at the moment. What are these? For example, the Entangling Vines. So there's the Vines tokens that you put on the boards, uh, like something like that. And so they give you the ability to, to slow down your opponent. So there, if there's that Vines token on a location, it lasts until your next turn. If somebody steps on your location where your, one of your followers is or not, let's say, it can be an uh, empty location or is it yeah you control so it must be a location where your one of your followers is they have to spend two action points for example yeah that's really simple and the transmute you can uh, change the relics basically these are the ma magical essences you can change one uh, three magical essence of a single type into another one single type and corrupt where you, you put the corrupt tokens beneath other followers and when they are promoted, they will give minus points at the end of the game. And now we can uh, use the um, movement points to collect relics. So usually it's when you discover the location for the first time, you will collect its mana basically. But now you can get their mana all the time with the divination and time stop and so on. Upheaval, obliterate, 45, uh, where you can also put those war tokens down and this is the usual action war tokens but they give you an extra armor when somebody attacks you so for example if uh, somebody gets to your location let me show you over here they, they they can basically i'm sorry they can basically attack you for one action point if they attack you they will just remove you and then they will get one blood mana and you will get one blood mana that's the only way to get the blood mana over here and so that's where those different uh, spells like the 40 way spells uh, can do no harm to you and can defend you very well. And eventually you will use all those spells during your turn and move around the map. And then at the end of the game, you will take a look at what spells do you have. The advanced level spells give you more points and so on. So all the spells give you points and also all the different locations and majorities of those locations so if you if you own the most mines you get some points if you own the most libraries you get some points and then whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game so first of all components and artwork and this one this one looks nice i mean um the insert is not as functional as i would like it to be it's like there it is for kind of a placeholder there's an insert but it's not as as good um though it's it's still an insert which is nice um the the rule book um the rule book leaves some questions it's not the best written rule book but it's not the bad rule book so i'm all right with the rule book how it's written how it's done let it be that so if we go into the components themselves now so the thing with the retail um, version of the game, there's I think there's the deluxe version of the game as well, with those foil cards. Though I I I learned that the foil cards aren't the best quality because they shine and it's like so bad to 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 look at them and to see what's what's written on them. So I think the deluxe version is not better. But the retail version, as I understood the the, the board itself, like for me at least, those those different tiles, the the location tiles. And those little tokens are too little. The the location tiles, the, the board, let's say the game board itself, is is small, you know. And there are icons and text and so on, and it's very colorful, and it becomes a little bit hard to see um, if you're playing and like uh, there's a bunch of your wizards or the apprentices out on the board. It's a little bit more difficult to see a little bit of too, a little too much color on that. And also those little um, like tokens that represent a certain spell, which is continuous spells of that for one turn or something like that, you know, uh, those like um, lava spell or whatever, I don't remember, the wines spell, so on. <clears throat> they have like tiny pictures on them. 
and sometimes it's really hard to to see oh this is that spell that spell it's, it's so small it's so samey kind of a it's a bit too graphical too colorful for that so there are some of those small caveats in there but it's still playable it's it still looks nice the the board where you are blending those elements i'm sorry the spell or students or something like apprentices we're gonna take a talk about the theme in a moment but yeah i i just have to subtract the one point for for the board being too small for the tokens being too small but everything is kind of functional so i give components and artwork uh, four out of five and then we go to the theme and um now that's where the game downgrades so the thing about the theme so this is uh, these are the like magical schools apprentices wizards and so on you'll, and you'll, you're going to that game like thinking like oh i'm gonna do the wizardy stuff and get some spells and do that and that you know and eventually i mean the board itself it's it's you're roaming around you are kind of collecting the the chakras whatever it is the i don't remember how you the mana yeah, something like that, and then eventually you, you are going onto those uh, towns and villages and so on. And then you're trying to collect more of the different resources. So your apprentices are kind of your apprentices are basically like resources. So when you move, uh, your wizard, you can uh, there's like one wizard. So you can, you move your wizard, and then you can kind of a uh, uh, your apprentices pop out on the board as you go. It kind of feels um a little bit. <laughs> or not a little bit unfamiliar. I mean, like it, it, it feels very unfamiliar. And also, when you, we go back to that uh, element blending board, this one feels like there are like basically there are two elements. They blend together. They create a new element. Now, in this scenario, it means that your apprentices fight each other, and eventually you learn a new spell. What? I mean. For me, at least, I, I, it doesn't make sense. Maybe you can explain me in the comments below. But, I mean, in this one, it would work better if it would be, like, something about the chemistry, you know? You have those different elements, you blend them together, you make a new potion and so on. That would work perfectly. But this one, it doesn't make sense. It's, 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 it's a really cool puzzle over there, but it's an abstract one. And it's, it's totally tacked on theme. On that part of the game and I'm, I'm gonna talk about mechanics but that part of the game is extremely important part of the game you you think about that part of the game a lot in this game and it's informatic and that means that the whole game becomes kind of informatic the board itself is spreading out you're kind of fighting each other it also doesn't make sense so there is some theme through the art there is some theme through this blending and and those spell cards you know the spell cards are really cool I like them but yeah, the theme is not really there. So I give theme 2 out of 5. Now we go to the mechanics. And also, how to say, so the territory control and going around the board, collecting the mana and getting more apprentices from your central pool, pool to your own reserves and so on. And then getting them on the sideboard where you blend those different... Uh, apprentices into new apprentices like, like they say if you like they fight each other and one gets higher and he's now more skillful and learns a new spell also feels like I, I like the part of blending uh, what I don't like is that whenever like you have like you have two apprentices so in red and yellow uh, you blend them together into orange now the thing is that in in my with my logic you already know yellow and red spell but now if you blend those two people there and there's no one on the yellow or red space you cannot use that spell it's weird i mean like why why it should have been done differently i mean like it's you become more skillful i mean like you like you only have a certain space in your in your head for learning spells i mean like it sounds weird. It sounds extremely weird. It sounds so tacked on. It sounds weird of a mechanic itself as well. So it, I'm becoming better. I'm not like just, you know, leveling up. It, it, it Like, if 
I'm like 29 years old, it doesn't mean that I wasn't 28 years old before and so on. It's kind of a... They cut off everything that was before. There was no past. No, there's only present, you know? And maybe the future. It's, it sounds weird. So th that mechanic over there. I still like that board. I still like blending things, but I don't like that it gets rid of those. Like, you, ha you have to have more apprentices over there, but then it becomes kind of like very abstract puzzle thing over there so i yeah that'd be so the board itself i like I, I like roaming around i like exploring things so in this board while you are exploring this board it's very uh, i mean like not very but eventually you get tired but <laughs> it's, it's it's still interesting yeah you want to get certain like uh, locations you want to get to certain parts but the thing is that Eventually, when everything is ex explored, you it, it, it depends on the players. If you are players who like to attack each other, then you go out and attack each other. And players who don't like to attack each other, they kind of preserve themselves. And eventually, they kind of have to, and they, they feel uncomfortable, and they kind of, uh, you know, try to do it without attacking, but they still attack. And it kind of feels very tacked on as well. The, the, the attacking part, the, the territory control part feels very tacked on and it's like very simple. Just go there, remove, just go there, you have action points, blah, blah, blah. And when you go to the spells themselves, some spells are really cool, some spells are, I don't know, they, f they don't feel great, they don't feel like I would like to choose them. Some of the spells are really cool, but yeah, it's not, not all of them. So kind of a, the game tends to be Rather same each time because you start from the same location and you spread out, you explore, but you can explore the same, kind of the same things. There are towns, there are things that give you all the same stuff, you know, and only those like, like different, like special races and the races in, in, races in the center are always there and the races on the, on the side can be a little bit different where they are and so on. So let it be, but eventually, so let's, let's. Let's go further from the mechanics. So I give mechanics 3 out of 5 and it goes to replayability because that's where I'm going to. So, replayability of this game. You start in the center and you kind of go um, that way and the other way. So every every player kind of goes into a different way. You, you don't really want to fight each other in the beginning. You want to explore stuff. And mostly as I have seen... It's, uh, and I have tried a different one, but what, what I understood is like, um, you kind of go somewhere, you explore a few tiles, and then build a tower. You explore a few tiles, and then build a tower. The tower part is cool. You can only teach the apprentices in your tower. Uh, kind of a nuisance, but kind of a cool. But still, it's, it's kind of a samey strategy for everyone, and it doesn't feel as satisfying the next time you play it, or the next time you play it, because... Um, I'm, there are some games that start the same all the time and I'm fine with them because they are maybe easier or they have other elements that create a lot of symmetry in the end. In this one, we have, we, like, every one of us has the same spell deck, the same spells. Yeah, we can choose from the same spells. It depends how we blend and how, what, what territories we, uh, what territories we explore and control that's where that part comes in what spells should we go with and if we go back to the mechanics as well but it means that the game wants us to do certain things not like we are like oh i i want to teach i, I want to learn that spell it kind of depends on what territories you have in front of you yeah you you can go attack and get other territories but eventually like i mean i mean <laughs> The replayability is based on what game um, kind of uh, guides you through. And sometimes it can be samey, sometimes it's a little bit better. And yeah, if, if the replayability mechanics, they blend together in this review right now. And eventually, what you're trying to do, you're trying to just build the tower right away and then do your territory control stuff and then do the same blending all the, all the way. And the spells are though, there's a certain amount of spell cards in each deck and it's really cool to explore them in the beginning but eventually they're all the same the spells stay the same 
and this game needs an expansion badly in order to, to for its replayability to be better. So I give replayability 3 out of 5. It's still kind of there, so you can explore the different spells and kind of different combinations, but sometimes it depends on your luck. And that means that maybe you will not explore things, and that devaluates the replayability a little bit. Now we go to the scale. Um, I mean, this is a territory building game, so... Um, in this one, if you play with three or four players, I think it's much better. Um, I mean, not, not much better, but I mean, like, it's better to play with three or four because then you have a little bit more kind of attacking with each other because without the attacking, it doesn't feel as good of a, of a territory control thing. But with the attacking, you need some more players. Uh, with two players, you can play two. It's, it's nice. You do your own thing. You kind of, a, it's kind of a different game a little bit. You don't attack each other as much you can attack, but, I mean, the board is also different with each amount of players, I'm sorry. And so, yeah, it's 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 the smaller board for a small amount of players, so that kind of helps, you know, at least that. So, it doesn't really matter with how many players you play, but I still think three or four will be better, more competition between yourselves. So, I give the scale four out of five. And so, uh, this game will get 16 out of 25, doesn't earn any medal, and this game just fails on few points, like it creates the gap between the territory uh, building and cool but unthematic kind of a puzzle solving element blending thing, and then also the the spells are all the same for every player, so there's not enough asymmetry for like kind of a cool replay value. And yeah, the theme is not really there. So I I didn't feel like it's a bad game, but it's a it's a mediocre game. It's 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 playable. You can enjoy it, and some people will enjoy it. But probably not me. And I mean, the first time I played it, I was like, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm trying to to like this game for what is not. But then I realized, like, no, it's it's the game. So that's it for Archmage. And thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All of these things are on there. And we have the virtual casts um, as well that we do with Kyle. Uh, like once a month sometimes we do it uh, a little bit more rarely depends on the timetable but some but then we then we do it um, in like every two weeks if, if we skip one of the months and so on so look at that we do the top tens and do the different like mini games and discuss our recent plays and future plays and so on blah 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 so just take it out and we see you another time bye bye this channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.